Hi there and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. In today's video I'm going to show you how I make my high temperature hot press soap using tallow from our own cattle and also I'm going to make an attempt to do an in the pot swirl so stay tuned till the end of the video when we cut the soap to see how that turns out. So I have listed my recipe in the description box below as far as what I use to make my hot process soap. And here at this point here, my oils have heated up to a temperature of over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I've stirred in some French green clay already, worked that in with a hand blender, and now I'm just adding my lye solution to the hot oils. And this lye solution also is uh, very hot. It's just been mixed up and its temperature is somewhere over 200 degrees as well. So this is why it's called a high temperature hot process soap because I have uh, blended the two items together at very high temperatures. So I have hand blended this mixture for about three to five minutes and now it's reached what we like to call trace. So that's when you sprinkle some of the uh, mixture across the top, it sits on the surface. So it's kind of like a thick pudding stage now. So what I'm gonna do now is just put the lid on it and let it cook. So at this point, this is what we call saponification. So this is when the fats and the oils that I have melted um, have combined with the sodium hydroxide or the lye and a chemical reaction is gonna happen and we are soon gonna have soap. So I have all my ingredients ready to add, and I'm just going to keep an eye on this until it starts to volcano, which is about five, 10 minutes. So when I remove the lid here, I will show you what volcano means. As you can see, this soap mixture has gotten super hot and it, the surface started to crack and it's bubbling up and it is at a very high temperature right now. So I just kind of watch it rise a little bit and then I just slowly, Try to stir it down, making sure I don't splatter myself and kind of stir down that volcano. And this particular batch of soap, um, the saponification has happened quite quickly. Sometimes you have to stir it down and let it volcano a second time. But I can see by the texture here that I pretty much have uh, reached saponification with this. And at this point, I just do a lot, a lot of stirring can get quite tiring so I switch back and forth between my uh, two hands keep stirring with my spatula and my um, other tools and what I'm waiting for is to reach what we call the waxy Vaseline stage so that's when it is um, you know it's, it's all well combined and if you stir it it kind of has a waxy texture So once I feel like it has uh, reached this stage, what I like to do is a zap test, and that is when I take a little piece of it, cool it off, touch it to my tongue, and if it tastes like soap, then we have soap. But if it zaps your tongue like a licking a battery, you know that it's not quite uh, complete. The saponification process is not quite complete, so then I do some more stirring till I reach that point. But this batch is ready to go. We have soap, so I am ready to add some of the other additives to it now. So the first thing I'm gonna to add to my uh, soap now is the goat's milk, and I have just warmed it up slightly so it's not cold and it won't shock the soap. And I just have to slowly stir this into the mixture. So I always like to add goat's milk into my soap. I am able to uh, source it locally and adding this to your soap uh, makes the bar a nice gentle cleanser. It's rich in nutrients and helps with dry skin. So now I'm gonna be adding the super fat. So these are extra oils and butters that I have melted down and warmed up. And like the goat's milk, because we're adding these in after saponification has occurred, they won't lose any of their skin loving properties. So that's why we like to call these super fats because they're really going to make this soap a really nice bar for the skin. So as you can see here, when I'm stirring, my soap is really nice and fluid still. And 
with that, it makes it uh, easy to do some different colors if you want to separate your soap and do some swirls or do some different layering in your soap mold. So I'm thinking because I have such a nice fluid soap here today that I'm going to try doing what is called the in the pot swirl. So I'm going to take some of this soap, um, give it a darker green color because I'm kind of working with greens today. I have French green clay already mixed in. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and add some more color to it and see if we can do a in the pot swirl. So before I attempt my color swirl, I have a couple more additives to put into the soap. And first of all, I'm going to add in some warmed up honey. This will help add uh, bubbles to your soap. And then also I have my essential oils. So this is going to be the scent uh, portion of the soap. And in today's batch, I'm going to be using some patchouli oil and some sweet orange essential oil. And this is one of my favorite scents and favorite scents of all my friends. So this batch is probably going to get shared with a lot of my friends. Okay, so now that I have everything added into my soap, it's time to do the in the pot swirl. So what I've done is I've taken a measuring cup and added some more French green clay and some spirulina powder, which is a natural green colorant I like to use. I dissolved it in a little bit of the uh, jojoba oil. And now I'm just gonna scoop in a bunch of the soap. And I do have to work really quickly now because the soap is starting to cool down and as it cools down, it starts to get hard. So I am just quickly going to incorporate that green color into the soap. So once I got that color fully incorporated into this soap, then I just start pouring little blobs of it here and there into the pot. I'm only going to put about half in right now, and then I'm going to just work it in with a few swirls. I don't want to stir it too much, but just stir it in a little bit. And then I will repeat that with the rest of the soap, just by adding little blobs of it here and there. So you can see my soap is starting to harden and uh, solidify, so I need to work fast here now. So once I've got all that green color in there, I will give it a few more stirs and then this stuff is ready to go into the molds. So I'm using a loaf style mold here and I like to fill it about halfway first and just tamp it down really good. Make sure I don't have any air bubbles in my soap and then top it up with another layer. And the rest of the soap, I'm going to use these molds here to uh, finish off the rest of the soap. Then once I have all my soap into the molds, I put my soap into the freezer and leave it in there for at least three to four hours before removing. So you can use your soap right away with this method, but I like to leave it on the counter for, you know, several days to let the soap kind of dry out and cure. And then we're ready to put it into the cutter and see how the swirls turn out.
So as you can see here, that in the pot swirl turned out pretty good. I just kind of gave it a little bit of an interesting design in the soap, which is kind of nice. So if you enjoyed watching this video on how I do the high temperature hot press process soap making, I would love to hear your comments below. Please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos coming to the Little Garden channel. Thank you for watching.